Hey, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Wednesday Wisdom, sponsored by K-12 Sports Tech on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's Wednesday Wisdom guest. You're going to be excited. But uh, first, we want to give a shout out to our podcast sponsors. Now, don't hit that fast forward button. These are all companies that I used as an athletic director or I've got a direct connection to. I'm really recommending that you check them out. So listen to our shout outs, then listen to the segment, and then go and visit these sponsors. I'm telling you, you're going to be glad you did. Here we go. We want to thank K-12 Sports Tech for their sponsorship of Wednesday Wisdom. K-12 Sports Tech helps athletic directors and sport vendors connect through education and hands-on consulting services. Athletic directors are also invited to join the K-12 Sports Tech AD Think Tank and help influence how companies shape their tech to serve schools. To get started, just go to k12sportstech.com. That's k12sportstech.com. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Go to huddle.com and change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years, but when I became an athletic director, I wanted a platform that was going to work for all of our sports, and Huddle came through like a champ. Our coaches, our student athletes, even our parents just love the tools that Huddle provided that let our kids experience sports at the highest level. Join the 8 million users. Go to huddle.com. Turn your school into a Huddle school. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com. They're going to show you how to create world-class content for your social media channel in seconds. It's going to help you promote your athletes and celebrate your team's accomplishments. Gipper's used and trusted by over 4,000 high school and college programs across the country. It's professional graphic design made easy. Go to gipper.com to get started. We also want to say thanks to Snap Raised. Have you ever spent weeks and weeks with a fundraiser and then got little, if any, return? Stop right here. Go to snapraise.com. Hands down, the best online fundraiser out there. We used it at our school because it works. Coaches loved it. Our parents loved it. Go to snapraise.com. Check out their other great platforms. But if you're looking for a fundraiser, you found it. at snapraise.com. We'd also like to thank Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Go to hometownticketing.com. It's digital ticketing that offers more. We also want to say thanks to Ohio University's online Master of Science in Athletic Administration. This affordable 20-month online program focuses exclusively on interscholastic athletic administration. And when you finish, you're not only going to have your master's degree, you're going to have completed 11 NIAAA leadership training courses that can go toward your RAA or your CAA. You're also going to be part of a nationwide network with connections in athletics across the country. To get started, just go to ohio.edu slash info slash M-A-A. We want to thank Vital Signs Wall of Fame. Go to their website, vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check out their interactive touchscreen, that's right, touchscreen video consoles. They're a great way to showcase your school record boards for all the teams, for all the sports, or your school's Hall of Fame or simply share your school's unique story and your proudest moments. The website is vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check them out today. You're going to be glad that you did. We want to say thanks to Home Campus. Home Campus is a platform that you will use every single day. Things like uh, schedules, uh, uploading rosters, communicating with your stakeholders, student-athlete eligibility and clearance. Who doesn't do that every day? And Home Campus is going to do all of this better. It's going to do it faster. It's going to give you a lot of time back in your schedule. To get started, just go to homecampus.com. That's it, homecampus.com. We'd like to thank Sideline Interactive indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo to see their scoreboards and their score tables in action. Probably one of the best purchases I ever made was our Sideline Interactive indoor score table. Go to their website, sidelineinteractive.com. Schedule that live web demo today. And we'd like to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. 
you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Go to sideline interact, excuse me, go to athleticsurveys.com. Uh, talk to Larry Ledgerwood. They're going to create a custom survey that lets you take the pulse of everybody in your program. And that data is tremendously valuable, especially when you're talking with a frustrated parent or maybe your principal or even your school board. The website is athleticsurveys.com. Make sure you visit them today. Where'd you go? Welcome back, everybody, to another segment of Wednesday Wisdom on the Educational AD Podcast. We've got a member of our original Wednesday Wisdom team back for another great segment. Uh, regular listeners will recognize the name Suzanne Vick from the great state of Washington. Uh, Suzanne is a certified master athletic administrator. She's the director of athletics at Curtis High School in uh, the great Northwest. Uh, it's a busy spring day, but uh, she's taking some time out of her schedule. Suzanne, welcome back to uh, Wednesday Wisdom. Thanks for having me. It's always so fun, and I always get confused because it's on my calendar for 11 o'clock, which is actually 8 o'clock your time. That's right. I'm sorry I, I got you out of bed, although I remember once, I think we did a, a 9 a.m. one my time, so you were up really early. Uh, I'm always up early. <laughs> We, uh, again, Suzanne and I connected uh, actually uh, virtually uh, during the NIAAA's virtual conference a few years ago, uh, you know, found a kindred spirit. And uh, we've always, um, you know, last couple of years, we hung out at the uh, national conference. But this year, it was just we were like ships passing. Uh, yeah. uh, we didn't get to connect. So I'm glad we got to spend some time today. Uh, you and I were talking before we started recording and, you know, the idea of budgets or the subject of budgets came up. And it's something that any athletic director uh, is going to probably have some challenges with small school, big school. Uh, you can only spend a dollar uh, so many times before that dollar is gone. So you talked about some creative ways to, to maybe make your budget go a little bit longer. So uh, can you share some of those ideas with our listeners today? Yeah, you bet. Um, I don't know, you know, we're in Washington state and there's a lot of, it's a lot of talk. Expenses are going up, budgets are going down. You're trying to do as much with uh, less. Um, some programs have been told they have to cut 40% out of their budget. Some of um, trying to figure out how to do that. Is that busing? Is it coaching? Is it diminishing programs? And it's just, it's just sad um, where we're at because we are really trying to do more with less. But um, ADs get creative pretty quickly. And um, this, this idea that I have stems actually from the pandemic. Um, I was just about ready to launch into my um, CMAA and was trying to figure out how can we bring these kiddos out of COVID better. I didn't have a budget that I could um, invest into mental health or any kind of character development building, didn't have that budget. And so I created a, a curriculum that could be done on a, on a week to week basis. Um, it was called Bigger Than Sports. So it had tons of different skill words. So for an example, the word resiliency, confidence, humility, vulnerability, personal accountability. These are all words that would take a coach through a week. And inside there, it, it talked about the definition. It talked about like, how can you build that skill? And then there were discussion questions. Um, the first, it, I did it all in a slide deck. And so the first slide after the title was, hey coaches, here's how you're gonna do this. And it's not, other than the first little bit, it's not direct instruction. It is intended for kids to be one-on-one -on -one or in small groups, to have conversations, to share out, to really help support each other and to take the coaches kind of out of the equation to just let kids have conversations because they're, they really are smart and they're the experts in their space. And um, I've learned that a lot with our girls and women sports group. Um, when I let them talk, they're sharing ideas that um, they're just, they're masterful, they're magic, and, and they really relate to their peers, you know, as a 50-something uh, woman, like, yeah, they respect me, they'll listen to me, but they re really listen to their peers um, on a whole different level. So um, the first year was called Bigger Than Sports Bikes, 
Um, the second year was, um, shoot, it's lost my, lost my brain. Um, this year is, um, called chasing excellence and it's after a book, um, titled chasing excellence that kind of follows the CrossFit games, but it, it just breaks down. And the words that we use this particular, um, lesson, um, started with excellence commitment, grit, positivity, embracing adversity, confidence, maximizing minutes, the process, control, um, turning the page, humility, um, competitive excellence, and clutch. Um, so this week, for an example of how we use this, um, this week's word is control. And one thing that I know about kids is they don't like to be controlled but they have to figure out how to control everything that's going on inside themselves. And so I send a, a email out every week to my, my coaches every Monday morning. And it's, some of it's just, here's what's going on this week. Um, here's some things to think about this week's email has a, um, Hey, looking forward to next year. Here's what we need to know. Here are the dates that are coming forward. Um, and then there'll be this slide that says find somewhere in your practice plan 15 minutes this week to talk about this word. And again, the words control. And so it talks about what things you can control as an elite athlete. Um, so training, nutrition, sleep, recovery, mindset. So those are the things, five things that are athletes that are, you know, we're getting close to the district tournaments, state tournaments, um, so what can they control inside that space? So then there's some thoughts about the word control and then discussion questions. There's also always an action step. So um, for these this week, the kids would be asked like, have you identified the things you can control? And if so, what are they? And are you taking control and ownership of those? Because the things you can't control, you can't control your officials, you can't control the weather, you can't control, the judges, you can't control your opponent, but so often our kiddos want to do that, right? Like the official, we lost because it's like, what can you control? Stay inside your sphere. Um, and then what actions take time out of your day away from the success that you can control? How, how have you changed? How can you change that uh, in there? And then the, lastly, there's an action step. So I have inside their action step. And I would say my water polo team right now is, is really embracing this and they're in pods and they talk about it and they have the, they'll have at the end of the week, athletes of the week that are um, best amplifying, voted on by their peers, the word control, controlling what you can control. So, and so it says identify five to 10 specific tasks that are essential to your ability to make progress in the area of training, nutrition, sleep, recovery, and mindset. So it might seem like a lot, but when you get people writing, they're going to change something or get something inside that they go, oh, shoot, I, I don't need to. Or, yeah, I probably shouldn't eat that Pop-Tart just because it's free down in the cafeteria. That might not be my best choice today. Um, so it's, an, it's a way that um, the coaches get something every week. If they choose to embrace it or not, that's up to them. A good chunk of my coaches are embracing it. And then in turn they're getting this education-based athletics that they're not getting inside their physics class, inside their math class, inside their English class. Um, next week's lesson would be is called Turn the Page. So when bad things happen, how do you flip the page and get onto the next page? All lessons that every athlete needs to know and giving coaches, they do such a great job having these conversations. This is just a intentionality around making sure your kids have really understood what those things mean and talk and and really have a chance to talk about them embrace them get better you know you you're talking about you know making your budget go further but you you touched on another you know super important topic athletic directors love to provide professional development opportunities for their coaches and by extension for the student athletes too. But it's one of the things that they don't always get to do because of time, or as you mentioned, budget constraints. And so here's, here's Suzanne Vick. She takes a book 
okay? That was probably, I don't know, 15, 16 bucks. And it's become an entire year or maybe more worth of professional development for the coaches. You know, and you already talked about how the lessons have trickled down to your student athletes. What what has been the response of your coaching staff? And again, for our listeners, you know, Suzanne runs a, a pretty big program with tremendous success as far as, you know, rosters are full. Yeah, they win some championships too. Uh, so it's a successful program, but how have the coaches responded to this piece or the pieces of this professional development opportunity that didn't cost that much? Yeah, it costs absolutely nothing. So that's the bonus, right? Other than time, it costs time. Um, this is kind of a summer project that I do have done now three summers in a row. Just like, what do I think based on the current culture that our student athletes need? I had read the book um, in the previous school year. I ended up buying it for my coaches that wanted it. Um, but the I, I wouldn't say that all of my coaches take it and embrace it, but I had a parent, this is an interesting, I had an email from a parent that said, um, sorry, my computer's telling me that they it wants me to restart. That'd be bad right now, right? Um, she's like, my son doesn't know what the word of the week is. <laughs> and it was just awesome because I share with this with my parents that, hey, this is what's coming. You can count on this being part of um, something that your your student athlete will be part of each day or each week. And she's like, my son doesn't know what the word of the week is. And so I forwarded the email to our, our coach and he's like, yeah, we did it on a day that he was absent. He didn't, he wasn't there for part of this engagement. So I was really happy to know that number one, the parent was wondering, hey, what's my kid getting out of this beyond just the sport? And then that there was this accountability that the coach was like, yeah, we did this this week. Um, I think um, for the most part, I think they really like having it. It also forces them to stop talking. So one thing that we do as coaches a lot is that we just talk, but kids sometimes just need a chance to, to share and to talk with each other and become the experts in the room. And so I think it's, it's done that as well. It's given them the ability to take some pressure off if they're willing to give up those 15 minutes of, you know, what they think they could be doing skill wise at that moment. Um, but I do think it's been really valuable. It's something that I will continue to do um, year over end. I um, sometimes I will throw like the old slides. I'll be like, hey, here's a couple other ones. You might, you know, this might not relate to you this week maybe this or this, um, but they, I think they like it. I think they do. And, and I, I'm happy that we're going beyond just the X's and O's. The other thing, I don't change these during the week. So the curriculum's uh, 12 weeks long. So that 12 weeks would take us through our playoffs from start to finish. Um, and if you're a multi-sport athlete, you're going to hear it two, maybe even three times through the, through the year, because I'm not changing them each season, but I don't mind that. Cause I think once you hear it once, then you hear it again, you're going to hear it differently. And then you might be able to help somebody that you're in a group with that could be different than what you originally had thought. Oh, absolutely. And, and how many times in, you know, you look at any sport are common themes, important themes, you know, instructional messages repeated you know, throughout the season. So no, great stuff. And I, I love your point about uh, coaches, you know, finding that 15 minutes in their busy practice time. Okay. You know, maybe we can, you know, not do this, whatever it is, third round of skill rep and, and talk about, you know, the, the mental, whether it's mental performance or mental health or just, you know, long-term uh, performance of their athletes. Great stuff. Well, one of the, the, the final word I believe in this one is, I think it's clutch. Uh, let me see. Where did it go? When, you going, when you were going through the words, I, you know, grit sticks out for me, but clutch is one of my favorite words. So I'm glad you brought that up. Well, and it's, let me see what it says right here. Clutch. Oh my gosh. I have a new computer. It's, it's causing me some, <laughs> some pain. Um, but what did it say? hold on for a second, Jake. Sorry. Um, we're talking about clutches, like it's where your oper where your pr 
preparation meets that opportunity and you don't have to be, it's not, it's not luck. Clutch is not luck. Right. Clutch is where you've done everything and prepared. And I, we've had a couple times where we weren't real clutch and we didn't get lucky, but you could see the mental breakdown of our kiddos. And it's then that we like, tell me how you use this. Tell me how you utilize this. You know, maybe you'd need to do something five times this week that really hit on that mental aspect of the game. You know, you go to a college level and you're going to have the mental aspect addressed. Like it's so prevalent right now that, you know, mental health of our student athletes is really important. In a college setting, you may have a budget to have a sports psychologist on your staff to really make sure that they're hitting all of these areas. Whereas like we're trying, and I think COVID brought this out of us all is that we're trying to be college athletes athletic directors inside this just squashed budget and limited personnel. Mm -hmm. And so this is just an area I'm, I'm happy to share any of these slides with anybody, um, any of the slide decks, you can copy them, change them, make them better then send them back. Once you made them better, send them back. Well, speaking of Sharon, let's go ahead and do that. If one of our listeners wanted to reach out, find out more about this project or just connect with you and listeners, if you're not a, on Suzanne, uh, um, if you're not on Suzanne Vick's network or she's not on yours, you're really missing out on a great resource. How do they get a hold of you, Suzanne? Easiest way to get a hold of me is through my email. Um, I don't know. I'm sure every athletic director gets a million emails, but those are the ones that are fun to get because it's fun to connect with people that um, are in the same place, going through the same battles and coming out on the other side. Okay. Um, so email, it's S as in Sam, V as in Victor. I C K. So that's S Vic at U P S D 83.org. And the U P S D stands for university play school district. And then it's 83.org. So S Vic at U P S D 83.org. Okay. Well, Suzanne, always great to catch up with you and uh, all the best moving forward in a very busy spring season. And uh, thanks again for sharing with our listeners today. You betcha. Have an awesome day. Um, go get them. Okay. And as always, go Vikings, right? Okay. Go Vikes. Okay. Uh, for our listeners, just a reminder, we upload the Zoom recordings of all of our interviews to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. Of course, we appreciate you listening. Come back next time for another great Wednesday Wisdom segment and just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll see you next time. Always great to hang out with Suzanne Vick. Uh, make sure you reach out. Some great stuff uh, for professional development for your coaches. Before we go, let's give one more shout out to our sponsors. Now, again, please visit these sponsors. Mention you heard about it on the podcast. We want to thank Ohio University's online master's program. We want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com. Let's say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. That's athleticsurveys.com. Home Campus, uh, it's a platform you'll use every single day, homecampus.com. K-12 Sports Tech, become a member of their AD Think Tank. That's k12sportstech.com. Vital Signs Wall of Fame, uh, go to their website, vitalsignswalloffame.com. Huddle, turn your school into a huddle school. That's huddle.com. Hometownticketing.com, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Sideline Interactive Indoor Score Tables and Video Boards. That's sidelineinteractive.com. And the number one online fundraising platform, snapraise.com. Thanks again for listening to Wednesday Wisdom. We'll see you next time on the Educational AD Podcast.